previously on Forsyth Fantasy Hour. Hi, my name is Vicki Forsyth, and I play Emmy Hilltopper. She is a adventurous little 30-year-old halfling that grew up in a small kind of village called Tranquility Bay. There was an um, unexpected um, flood because a dam broke. She had a childhood friend uh, named Elliot, which was a green dragonborn. So in this confusion, she ended up saving a lot of people. Unfortunately, not her friend. And, it's and, the real and thing. if he asked me, you know, what are you doing? I was like, oh, well, I, I don't trust anyone, you know, is, is the, the thing. So Elliot describes the other five members of the Insect Glaive. Next is the Hive King, the leader of the group, a gargantuan half-orc who is skilled in combat and negotiation. As our one-on-one flashbacks continue, Vicky and Scott see what Emmy's life was like before Sundew. So hello everyone, um, welcome to the Forsyth Fantasy Hour, episode 10, I believe. Um, I'm here today with Vicky Forsyth. Hi there. Um, it's just me and her today, like what um, I did with Tristan um, last episode. And so this whole episode is just kind of us chit-chatting, a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more free-formed um, role-playing, and um, just kind of establishing Emmy as a character while setting stuff up for the major campaign. How you feeling, Mommy? Oh, terrific. Terrific. I'm, I'm excited to get back into our story. Yes, like we, um, like me and Tristan said in episode nine, it's been uh, a very long time since we recorded because we recorded um, episodes one through eight um, within the course of about a month. Mm-hmm. And then um, we took a very long break. Luckily, we did that because Tristan was out of town and yes. traveling. And then your work got super hectic and crazy. It did. It did. But I am so super excited to get started again. Absolutely. Um, we were talking a little bit before on, um, your character. And so this episode is going to take place 20 years before, um, the start of the show. Oh, and I was just a little young whippersnapper. Yes. Um, we talked about this in the sort of end with time for a heist when you reconnected with Elliot, who you thought was dead. Um, because of this whole tragic event that happened with you that, um, you made up for your character in this backstory. Um, so I think one of the first things that we're going to do. Oh, and again, I, I, and I mentioned this with Tristan as well. Um, with Forza Fantasy Hour as a whole, we always kind of, I wouldn't say play loose with the rules of D and D, but, um, you know, sometimes we don't follow everything that happens with the game and so this is going to be another more um role-playing focus so like uh emmy's at the at the end of time for a heist you're you're level three you're at third level um but this is like way before you started being an adventurer so like we've done some tweaks to your um character sheet and we have some little mechanics to work with these flashback stuff oh all right that makes sense sure you're the you know dm so whatever you say that's right (laughs) Um, hey, mommy. Yes. Relax. All right. You're a little nervous. Oh, no, not at all. Don't be nervous. You've already done like <laughs> eight episodes. I know, but it's been a while. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because it's know. just me and you. Tristan's not even here. I know. I miss Jack. Yeah. You can't have the, the punchlines of our, of our comic relief. I know. I know. But we got the puppy. We He's do. always in the room. He is. Uh, my uh, little dog, Angus. Check yes. out my Instagram and Twitter if you want to see more of Angus. Because yes. I only take pictures with him. Uh, all the time. No one else. Only with my dog. <laughs> um, let's, let's get a little bit um, uh, with, with, with Emmy as a character. So, this whole event happened in Tranquility Bay. Where you, you were saying this, this dam broke. Mm-hmm. Um. I kind of imagine sort of like the ma- major um, water reservoir towards mm-hmm. the town. Was it a small town, a big town? Oh, uh, actually, yeah. It uh, the, the way I envisioned, uh, remember it is it was a small kind of village. Um, 
almost kind of like in a valley a little bit. Okay. Um, there, there's, there's mountains, you know, kind of all around. Um, so it would, the water for some reason was, you know, higher and the dam kind of, I guess it way years before, um, they had, they had, um, fixed it in such a way to where the, the water was their main, you know, water supply. So right. they, you know, so, um, they, they had that, well, dammed up and it was up higher. Um, and then there was a natural, you know, um, I, almost like an earthquake. Um, oh, okay. So it was like there, there was a, um, it was a natural disaster. Yeah, yeah. Earthquake happened first. Mm-hmm. Um, and so nobody really realized, um, the, the effect, you know, the, the damage that it had. Maybe there was cracks that they, they didn't know. Um, and then over time with the pressure and stuff, um, which started out as a, a small leak, you know, ended up being a bigger problem. And, um, at the time, Emmy was, you know, kind of like a schoolgirl and there was, um, and you, you know how, how sometimes you watch shows, you know, where it just seems like the kids seem to be more uh, in tune with stuff than the adults. Oh, okay. Like and, Stranger Things. Yeah, like Stranger Things, Scooby-Doo, I don't know, pick one. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, the kids <laughs> were going... They're two very drastically different shows. <laughs> whatever. I'm just saying. Kids, you know. Okay. And so the kids are like... uh Hey, I think there's a problem here. And the adults are like, no, it's fine. It's fine. It'll be fine. No, you know, we, we got this, you know. Uh, and you're like, I don't think so. So th- that's how I envision that it all started to take place. But again, over time, um, this actually became a problem. And then so, the whole big kaplush. So happened. were the earthquakes a, a reoccurring thing? No. It was actually... So was it just once? Yes. That cracked the dam? Yeah, and it was years... Actually, it was like, I would say, even like as much as a year prior. You know, it was a while back. Okay. A little while back. It happened, and because that was an unusual thing, they really never knew what to do about it. Like, oh, wait, we have earthquakes. Maybe we shouldn't reinforce the dam, you know? So it was something like that, that just something that occurred, then they all blew it off, everything's fine, and it wasn't. Okay. So, and um, your background as a, as a character, because when, when you make a character, you always have like a background, mm-hmm. like Tristan's as an urchin, right. yours as a folk hero. So you were kind of one of the, the leading causes to save everybody in the town. Um, how'd you do it? <laughs> well, I think that's something that um, we should gonna, figure out we're going to have to figure out together. Because um, it's not like she was... Wonder Woman, you know, um, but then again, I think she was very, always, always very intuitive. Okay, that makes sense within your character of intuition. Exactly, exactly, because there have been a bunch of times later that, you know, you'll be like, oh, she sensed this, and when I'd roll, boom, I mean, I'd have like a 20, yeah. you know, so her- I think that only happened once, but yeah. Oh, no, I remember it being many times. Okay. But uh anyway, so I think- um, that that was one of the things that she already had this, um, natural intuition. Okay. That was, um, you know, part of the, the, the reason why she kept insisting, look, I think something is wrong. Okay. And the problem is she was right. So when the dam finally broke, maybe you and Elliot would, um, because I'm, I'm not trying to be mean or anything uh-huh. with your character, but I can't imagine that like, you had many other friends. I think it was just you and Elliot. Yeah, exactly. That's true. That um, is that is true. We both kind of, um, you know, were you know we 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 weren't outcasted like you know, but we just weren't part of the popular kids. Okay, you know, but we did have. Wow, you totally are the Stranger Things kids. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of. Wow, that's weird. So, uh, um, oh my goodness. And even the, the, the boy who assumed dead and drowned is now back to life. Oh my goodness. That is hilarious. Okay. We did not plan that. That is hilarious. <laughs> is this Stranger Things? <laughs> no, it is not Stranger Things. Um, it's fantasy Stranger Things. It's fantasy. Okay. My goodness. It's just a coinky thing. That's really funny. That is. <laughs> wow. Um, so I imagine when everything kind of went south, um, like, Maybe you and Elliot had always prepared for this to happen. You were kind of like a little, like, no, no, no you don't. Want, okay, no, not always prepared for. No, um, and then because I, I kept trying to think of 
um, you know, like maybe we were on this little like hike, you know, up to the dam because we kept hear- maybe hearing some some strange crackling and stuff that we were like, look, did you hear that? And then we wanted to investigate. But I think that um, perhaps and with him being a lizard born. Was, dragonborn. Oh, Dragonborn. Yeah. What, was he in, initially um, in, in, innately stronger? Yeah. Well, I mean, as, as a kid, I think they mature way faster than okay. halflings do. Um, and, and I know halflings mature faster than humans do. Because what, so. what I'm picturing is, is that he, when we came to the spot that we realized, oh my goodness, this is what really it is, that he was there um, almost like trying to hold something while he said, go get help. Okay. Okay, which would make sense. Why? Well, he was, you know, presumed dead because, well, this is what happened. Yeah. So as I go, you know, okay, here's here's a school, like really almost in the path, um, evacuated stuff. You know, finally, you know, finally, the, the the roar or the sound was obvious to where the people went. Oh my goodness, hark! Like m- maybe on this hike that you and Elliot went up. Um, you could see that this dam was leaking and there was water coming out. So then maybe as we got closer, we saw more and more water and more and more noise that they couldn't hear down below, but we could hear because we were right on top of it. Sure. So then Elliot maybe like started doing some makeshift, um, things like putting ropes, ropes or, um, like plywood or even like tree bark and tree branches. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say he would use like a dragon breath, but since he's a green dragonborn, he only has like poison, so he can't really do anything. Yeah, no, that wouldn't um, So, you know, that makes sense of mm-hmm. him trying to hold this back while you... And he said, you go while I try to do this because I think, yes, he did have maybe some ropes and stuff with him and nearby there were, you know, almost like not like, boulders, but trees or something to where know, he could tie. Maybe they're doing construction somewhere Con- else, yeah. like nearby. Um yeah. May, so is this point of kind of like you ran through the town like Paul Revere saying everybody needs to get out. And then by the time everybody started getting looked their, up and realized, oh, she's right. Um, it, Like the dam started breaking. Mm-hmm. So as you get everyone out, maybe you were going back to go see Elliot. But then by that point, it was too late and the whole thing broke. Yes. And it. it in the way that it kind of like burst open broke and then because because we couldn't find him we couldn't find him and and we couldn't you know it it just appeared that's why he was presumed dead yeah because we, we, we couldn't find him so and we talked about this too when we made your character pretty much almost a year ago um we talked about that you were you were a folk hero people were like celebrating you because you you basically saved the town. Mm-hmm. Um, and met, you and know. maybe that happened for a little while. But then when people kind of like it kind of, you know, maybe the hype died down and they realized, hang on, you left your best friend. Like people started giving you flack for that, mm-hmm. um, even though that's what he wanted you to do. Exactly. And you totally planned on him going back. It just it wasn't your fault. But people started blaming you for that. Yes, because he's the one that suggested, I'll do this while you go do that. It was, it was, it, you know, there weren't cell phones at the time. Right. You know, and so, um. Well, technically there are, but because the call clasps. Oh. This isn't back in the day. This is magic. This is a dragon kid. Darn. Okay. Forgot about the call class. You're too but, young to have one though. But at the time we did not have it. We didn't have this. Um, and what I really envisioned actually was going down to the town, getting some of the big men and stuff and having them come back up with me to help him. But it, everything happened. Um, it just, it just went south really bad, yeah. <laughs> literally. And then. When that didn't happen, um, then later people would say, "Well, wait a minute." And yeah, they started they started questioning everything. It's like, well, well, now at this point, why why are you doing that? And it just was very hurtful because it was clear that I had already lost my best friend. Yeah. And then for them to even question my motives or question that you know it was just so hurtful that I just I just I couldn't take it and instead of fighting with everyone i just did instead of the fight i fled fled right and so that goes into this episode and this adventure um how old were you when you left about 14 okay so it was within a couple months yeah after it all went down then it just seemed like immediately um you know how people are when all that started happening i was like 
Oh, so it was my intention, never my intention to leave forever, but I just had to get away. Okay. And when I did get away, I just, I just started walking. Did anybody go with you? No. No. Um, what about your family? We established, um, I think I was saying this before, but we got off subject, um, that your, your name was originally Emily, Uh but your dad calls you Emmy. That's right. Um, so did you like, I I had a dad. Yes. Okay. What about a mom? Um, I don't recall. Okay. She just wasn't in the picture. No, just wasn't in the picture. Just you and siblings. Okay, you, you don't want me to bring in any any hidden siblings in? Unless there is, you know, okay, we don't know about what all dad did in his younger days. No, no. But at the um, moment, um, I can say, yeah, it was probably just me and my dad okay. and um, and me and my friend. Um, yeah, for the most part. Okay. And um, so I so just kind of packed my stuff and did left, you, it, left him a note. Okay. Are you, oh, you didn't even tell him? No. Oh. No, no. I left him a note. And like I said, I really did intend to be gone forever, but I was hurt enough and big enough to where I just said, you know what? I'm going to like take a time out for a while. Um, but I did leave him a note. Okay. Oh man. <laughs> oh, it's sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was really sad. She was very upset. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I, this, is, I this is what Emmy slash Vicky probably would do. Okay. <laughs> um, so. I want to talk about your dad a little bit more. Okay. Um, cause he's cool. Yeah, he was cool. Why, why did you become or start becoming interested in being a cleric? Was that because of your family? Was that just because you were? Cause he was one too. Oh, he was one too. Okay. Oh, so, oh, so he was probably the, like the clergyman yes. or, of the town. Yes. Okay. So in a oh, so sense- you're a little pastor's dog. Exactly. I was going to say, I was kind of a par- uh, PK, pastor's kid. Okay. Sort of. But I um, admired him enough to think, wow, that's, no-. you know how some people think their parents are like dumb. I thought he was really cool. Oh, okay. That's neat. And that kind of fits with that you're not, especially your character, you're not inherently like super religious. No. Um, but like you, you use the the radiant magic that comes from being a part of the life domain. Exactly, and I think she really did have a lot of ve- a lot of natural gifts. Okay, and so she was kind of realizing it every now and then. She'd realize, "Whoa, that was interesting," you know. Um, and then she talked to her dad about it a little bit. Um, but I think he was also so busy um, that he kept putting it off. Like, oh, I'm going to. Um, help you with that or we'll 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 try you know getting talking more further about all this uh later i guess he kept thinking i was younger than i really was so we've been talking about your dad a whole lot um mr hilltopper yes um you said you had a name for him well you know a name came to me with my name starting with an e um it's because his name started with an e okay edward Edward Hilltopper. Yes. I like that. Me too. Um, that's really good. That's cool. Thanks. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> um, also, I think it's just safe to assume this whole Tranquility Bay was mostly um, probably halflings and humans. Mm-hmm. Um, even though South Coast is kind of a free province, like it's not run by. Um, we talked about it a little bit in episode seven. There's these this royal bloodline called the Gawi who. Um, the Hive King, who is the leader of the Insect Glaive, wants to kill everyone who's a part of that bloodline. Mm. Um, they are a bloodline of royal humans and elves. But since there's, there's so many descendants, they're mostly half-elves now. Um, but that's all up north. Um, that is all, like... Oh, okay. That really doesn't... That's why, like, I started the whole story in South Coast. Because there's a ton of junk <laughs> oh. going up up north but that doesn't really affect the people of south coast that's why so many people hire and do these treasure hunting type things and bounty hunters and thieves because like this is mostly a free a free province like no one really rules over south coast um it used to be under dwarven reign mm-hmm. but um the halflings live there too because halflings and gnomes are i don't know if it's canonically in D, but it is in no ishing okay there, uh, halflings gnomes and dwarves are all related in some way or another. And I think the reason why this this town was um named Tranquility Bay was cuz way in the beginning the the founders sure. wanted 
a like almost like a little tranquil paradise like a sanctuary like a little sanctuary sure. and people and it became that people okay. actually knew that they had you know the port and they had this and they had that and they had the big towns but tranquility bay was just that cool. and in fact even at some people would that would go off they would sometimes come back because they'd say we couldn't stand it hmm. you know okay and so for years it was just known you know like you got las vegas it's known that's what it's known for yeah this is what tranquility bay was known for and so um you know to have this 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 little and, and the way it was just tucked away like that um was just a sweet little you know t- small town cool Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, Scotty. Just me. This is pre-recorded already. And I'm jumping in with another ad break. Um, I want I just want to say thank you all for listening and supporting the show. Uh, I, I love it. And I know the rest of the team of Force I Fancy Hour does, too. Well, that you guys like listening and supporting the show. Uh, especially Vicky, who is absolutely killing it in this episode. Uh, I'm, I've been really impressed with her and Tristan's imagination and the courage that they have to do the, a show like this. Uh, I, I'm just even in really impressed with my own mom because like me and Tristan, we pitch shows and ideas and create different stories all the time. But for Vicky to come out and really do a lot of this, it's hard on her um, and she's been doing a great job. So um, I, I just think... That's awesome. I'm glad I can share it with all of you. And if you guys would like to continue um, supporting the show, um, one thing you can do is leave a review on iTunes. Um, I think I just kicked something while I said that. But nevertheless, um, or you can review it on whatever podcast you listen to. Podcast service. Um, I I know iTunes is real big on um, when you leave a review, it gets recognized and it comes up more and it'll be a part of the new and trending podcast and So it's kind of a big deal to review the show. So I highly recommend you do so. You can also follow the show on Twitter at FFH podcast. Um, There you can see um, updates on the show um, when episodes are released, which is every two weeks. And then um, even there, you can send questions and comments about the show or to any of us um, who work on the show, which is me, Vicky and Tristan. (laughs) Uh, you can also subscribe to us on YouTube at Scotty Milad, which is S-O-T-T-Y, Scotty, M-I-L-A-D. Um, there you'll find other shows that um, me and Tristan and Vicky do, like one called Games with Mom, where Vicky and I play video games together. It's super cute and very chaotic. I highly recommend our Zumbinis playthrough. It's like two episodes. It was super fun because uh, that's just a game I grew up with. And Overcooked, um, which is... That was so hard, <laughs> but it was very fun to watch, and it was really fun to play with my mom. And I named like three of the four episodes we have out right now, uh, but we plan on doing more. I have a very, very big plan for one of the series, and uh, I'm very excited for it. But you're here for D&D, so that's all for now. That's all for the ad break. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the episode um, as Emmy ventures out um, of Tranquility Bay, and we get to see... A little bit of what happens to her on her first day and night um, out of Tranquility Bay. Uh, And now before I go, I will let you know that the next episode will release on October 10th. So stay tuned and stay safe, adventurers. So um, we can get into the actual like playing of this episode. Oh. And since you, we have said that you, your father kind of taught you the ways of being a cleric, but you weren't really um, proficient, properly trained, mm-hmm. or you weren't like a part, uh, like you have these abilities, but you're not like dedicated to a specific right domain or church or anything like that. Um, well, just his. Yeah. Well, Wh- whichever the, one he was in. That's life. Yeah, which, yeah. That's why you can do these healing stuff. Mm. And so it's very useful to you. So that's why you continue doing it. Um, so right now, since this is way before you honed your skills right. in the next 20 years, um, you currently only have access to your cantrips right okay. now, which are all the cards right there. Yes. And um, I gave you two spells that are assigned to you when you are a part of the life domain, which is Cure Wounds and Bless, yes. which are very, very basic spells. Yes. So in this episode, don't worry about spell slots. You can do these as many times as you want. Oh, wow. Kind of treats all of these like cantrips. Oh, but well. you only have like five spells. Yes. 
Because I took one of your cantrips away because you got it by leveling up. Um, again, we talked about this off camera. I understand it was all audio, but it's off camera. Um, the closest town to you um, after Tranquility Bay is Bondsburg, mm-hmm. which you talked about going to. Yes. So you have just left Tranquility Bay. You're on the minute trail, minute path. I always get those confused. I need to make sure which <laughs> Yeah, cuz there are Which one I'm talking about? Cuz there's two roads that connect yes. all the the 12 major cities of No Wishing. I always talk about it. I think I always get it right too. I just don't. Well, it's either Minute Trail or Minute Path. Hour. No, it was one of them was Hour Path. Minute Trail. And Minute Trail. <laughs> I don't know. And it's not on that map. I thought you had it on your map. Ah, you you would think so. Okay. No, because at one point when we were playing. Yes. Um, oh, two of, points. In, in in the one where you and I did something that. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, we were just playing um, non-canonically. Yeah. Um, but th- like I even say it in the show as well. Mm-hmm. And I always say Minute Trail. We're going to go with Minute Trail. Okay, the Minute Trail. Um. I think that's the one I've said the most, so I think that's what works. Okay. So from here, I'm just going to always say minute trail. There's two roads, but I'm we'll only going to... Minute, hour, you know. No, I'm only going to talk about one. It's just the minute trail. Okay. Um. So you're walking on the minute trail. Um. Y- you got a couple days journey to mm-hmm. get to Bonsberg. It's kind of far. Yeah. Um, have you ever been there before? No. Okay. I never left Tranquility Bay. Oh, okay. I, I had b- born there and never left. But I um thought, you know what? It's time. I'm going to just go see what's out there, kind of like a little fraggle. <laughs> I'm just going to take off and see what happens. No, you will understand later why I'm so happy you referenced fraggles. Are you kidding? That just came to me. You, you, you Are don't you know. Are you serious? I, I'm going to keep quiet because it's... I'm just going to keep quiet. That's hilarious. Um, we think so much of like, it is seriously scary. <laughs> okay, so um, I need you to make a perception check. Alrighty. Two. So that's 15. Okay. So just over the hill, you can see a crashed wagon wheel. And you can see that this wagon has gone over... The hill. And you said you got a 15? Yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, oh. You can see some hoof prints leading that stop in front of the wagon wheel and this, and stop where it goes over the hill and where they continue like they've left. Ah. And you can hear someone moaning. Oh, okay. What do you do? Well, yeah, I can, you know, I just follow the footprints and such and the moaning until I find the... Moaner. Okay, so you go over the hill and you just see this wrecked wagon. Mm-hmm. Um, the horse is not there. That w- mm. should be connected to it. Darn. It was a fully covered wagon. Um, and there is one person who looks like the wagon driver. It's a human. Um, is dead. Oh. And then there is a very elderly woman in kind of tattered clothes who is holding her side and she's leaned up against the wagon. And she looks at you and she goes, help, help me. Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> and you laugh at the old woman. No, I'm laughing at you. <laughs> um, You're but- like half links job laughing at me. <laughs> I'm not Come laughing at you. me. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, old woman. Uh, <laughs> but I think, okay, I think this is one of those times that um, she's not really thinking um, she just kind of goes over to the woman and as she, and she feels, you know, compassion for her, um, cause that's who Emmy is. And so as she's touching her and trying to say, help her, like, here, let me help you sit up. As she's doing that, what ends up happening is she's actually, um, imparting some, some, some like of the, of the cure. So you would like to cast cure wounds on her? <laughs> yeah. Again. Yeah. You should but, tell me what you want to do, <laughs> okay. and then I'll tell you if what I can? happens. Okay. Yes. Because so I don't you, know. You would like to go and cast Cure Wounds on her. Ha- yeah, here's the thing, though. Yes. I'm going to tell you yes. However, she's doing this without even half even thinking. Okay. Um, it could be It could be that that um, this happened before, maybe when she was, 
you know, like last year or something. Maybe this is something Edward taught you. Maybe this is something that Edward taught me that, um, but she's doing it at the moment because she's, you know, kind of half thinking, saying, sure. here, let me help you. And when she says that, this is what she means, but the lady doesn't know that. Okay. Okay. Um, so you cast cure, cure wounds and you know what that does. And well, and it says touch and yes. it says. And you have to touch someone to do it. Sure. 1d8. The spell has no effect unless... You got to read it out loud. Oh. We're on an audio show. Oh, sorry, people. A creature you touch regains a number of hit points equal to 1d8. Your spell casting ability modifier. This spell has no effect on undead. Or <laughs> well, she is she is not an undead. Right. She, she is a live woman. She is um, a live woman. She's a human woman, and she's she, a human. She's very old. She's around her eighties. As you get closer to her, um, y- you can kind of see that. I won't tell you any more because okay. you have just said that Emmy is doing this without thinking. Yes. Um. So roll one d eight. Alrighty. Three. Okay. So um. You, your hands start glowing and it, it's this radiant light. And you, when she like kind of moves her gut out of the way, you can see that she was impaled by one of the spokes of the wagon that fell. Ah. Um, and wait, she's impaled. There's actually something in her. Oh, okay. Um, and when you start, it's, you stop the bleeding for sure. And it starts closing up a little bit, but she's still been, she's still impaled. Mm. And she goes, and she's like, it's hard for her to breathe. So she's trying to catch her breath. And she goes, thank you, sweetie. Do you think you can do a little more than that? Well, clearly we're going to have to pull this thing out. Okay. Um, Because, I mean, and we're in the middle of nowhere. Would you like to search the wagon to see if you can do something? Sure. Let's do that. I inspired this by stuff because of MASH. This is a medical situation. Oh, yes, indeed. So it's, use your medical knowledge as a nurse I know, in right? an open heart. <laughs> yeah. You worked in open heart surgery. Yes, yes, yes. So the... I was on the heart, what's called the heart team. So the woman has been impaled with a foreign okay. object. All right. Um, it is about... Um, it, it's, it's one of the wagon spokes. So it may be it's about three inches wide and it has been... You can see that it is actually like in her. Oh dear. Um, it is not sticking out the back of her. It is just in the front. Oh, okay. Okay. So maybe it's just a flesh wound. <laughs> um, no? yes. So. Okay. Would you, 20? Yes. If you want to look around to see if there's anything that you can use to help. Yes. All right. That's a 17. Oh, shoot. And then put what? Wisdom? Um, yeah, yeah. We'll do wisdom. Plus three. Okay. That's 20. Um, so you search around the wagon and you find something that would help this situation, help drastically in a medical situation. Right. What would that be? Well, first of all, I need to, um, once you pull it out, you have to, you have to pack it. You're going to have to, um, you know, it, put, put some gauze in, in, okay. In, in, Sorry, I'm just excited because this is, I, I just want you to do a medical <laughs> surgery on a fake fantasy person. Yeah. And, um, and so then I also noticed that in the wagon, evidently whoever that other person was, uh, you know, drank heavily. And so, um, you know, I did tell her, look, you're going to have to drink this because it's, is it alcohol? Yeah. Okay. Because that way it would help, you know, help her because she's a little, um, you know, shaken, shaken yes, and going into shock and stuff. So you got to calm her down. Okay. So just cause you, you know, uh, you know, with the cure wounds, just because it starts to feel a little better doesn't mean that she still doesn't have her blood pressure racing. Okay. So, so, um, so gave- you have found gauze. Mm-hmm. You have found, let's say, a bottle of whiskey. Yeah. Um, th- then there is a medical kit in the, um, in the wagon. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, we, we, what use- else would you need? Well, and, and you, and so what, what what I did was I first gave her the alcohol first because when you pull that thing out, you know, I didn't want her to completely freak out. Um, so gave her that to drink. Okay, so and she has drink in it. She has drink in it. And you can tell, you know, she's an old lady. So it hit her pretty hard, pretty quick. Yay. And so then I poured actually some um, after I then I pulled that, that thing out. When you take it out, I need you just to do a standard look at it. Like just do just roll the D20. Oh, okay. Let me do it. 
Oh, darn. <laughs> Remember last time it was such a good roll? Mm -hmm. Well, this time it's a three. So plus what? No, um, it would probably be wisdom. So but, plus three is six. Okay. Um, yeah, you just remove it and you don't notice anything out of the ordinary. Okay. And so then I took some more of that, that alcohol, um, poured it in the wound a little bit, then mm -hmm. packed it a little bit. Okay. Um, and she, of course, you know, winced and groaned a little bit, but she's not in terrible shape. No, um, do one final check and it's going to be a medicine check. Okay. It is a 17. Okay, plus your medicine, which I believe is probably three. Um, yeah, five. <laughs> plus <That's not> three. <laughs> 17 plus five. You are proficient in medicine. <laughs> yeah, um, clearly. So, yes. Um, yeah, you do a great job. You really, um, with the cure wounds, it... It, it cured it and then, um, or it stopped, it stopped it from bleeding. <laughs> and now that you've packed it, you realize that, um, this is probably the best that she's going to be. And you did a really, really fantastic job. And she looks at you and she's a little groggy from the whiskey. Mm -hmm. And she goes, thank you, sweetie. You know, we had so many people come by. And I, I've been here for hours and no one helped me. Oh, that's so sad. She goes, we were run off the road, me and me and this hired wagon man. I, I was trying to go back to my home. Oh. And t these bandits just attacked my wagon. And I fell out and I fell onto one of the one of the spokes and it went into me. And I just didn't know what to do. Oh, that's If so it sad. wasn't for you, you good Samaritan. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Now, how far are we from a town? Or uh, you're you're pretty far. But she says, you know, my my home is just just a couple of minutes away. We were almost there. If you could, if you could just take me there, sweetie. Absolutely. Okay. There. There you go. Okay. So, so sure enough, yeah, yeah. I I um help her to her her home. Awesome. Yeah. Oh um, my! Wow. <laughs> oh. Poor old woman. Poor old woman. Um, Ends well, though. Well, for, it's not over. Ooh. So bum, you, bum, bum. You, you take her um, back. You kind of walk with her. Um, she reveals her name to be Josephine. Hmm. She looked like a Josephine. And you start taking her back. Um, and she's kind of leading in the, in the direction. Again, she's a little, she's a little groggy. Um, it actually takes you a little bit longer than what she normally said. Um, and by this point, it maybe is starting to get close to sundown. Um, I don't know how long you've been on the road. For, mm -hmm. You probably left in the morning, Tranquility Bay, been on the road for a while. Um, now, now it's starting to get dusk mm. and, but you finally get to her cottage and it's this little two story cottage. Um, there is a little, it's, it's completely made of wood. There is this little fence around it. There's a little garden out front. Um, and this little porch patio, and it is completely in the middle of the woods, um, and you kind of have to go up a hill to go into it. And she goes, well, this is my place. Um, you know, I, I can't thank you enough. If if you'd like to stay for dinner, that would that would be wonderful. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was thinking that, too, on, on my way up here. I thought, oh, my, it's getting, it's getting dark, and I'm not fond of, you know, Sleeping outside in the dark. No, uh, no, I can't. I can't imagine anyone. So would if you do. don't mind, sure, I, I would just love don't want those bandits coming back. Right, um, and so I, I would appreciate um, staying with you. That'd be great if I could stay with you tonight. Wonderful. And as you say that, um, when you look at the clouds, you realize it's about to rain. Mm. So she goes, "Oh, even better, Mother Nature is a tricky mistress." <laughs> <laughs> and she kind of hobbles her way, and when she goes, um, there's a there's a walking cane um, propped up next to the door, and she grabs it, and she six gets up on it, and and so when you go into her house, um, uh, it's honestly what you would expect out of a um, a normal um, old woman cottage yeah like it's just this simple little cottage there's a little couch there's a little fireplace mm -hmm. um and then there's a little there is a little um kitchen in the back i would like you to make a perception check all righty two so 12 12 
Okay. Um, the only thing you notice else is you 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 see the stairways, um, which is actually a ladder to an attic, and that is the second story. Okay. Um, but you can't really see anything other than that. Um, but she goes, "Oh, honey, take a seat. Um, I'll, I'll start whipping up something for dinner." <laughs> what would you like? I make a really mean rabbit stew. Whatever you fix will be fine with me. Okay, that sounds wonderful. Um, so she starts making this stew, and you are currently in her little living room. What do you do? Well, not 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 too much. You know, I I've had a busy day. I you know clearly the day before I was very distraught, so. I decided to basically leave my home, run right. away. I'm walking along. I come across this injured lady. Yes. You know, so I've had a busy day. So I think I'm just kind of just sitting there thinking about stuff. And I probably just fell asleep while she was cooking. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. So you, you check out for a little bit. And mm-hmm. then she comes back. And um, she doesn't have a dining room. You're just kind of basically on her sofa. Yeah. And um, she has a little coffee table. And she comes in. And you wake up. And she's kind of in your face. And she goes... <laughs> Here you go. And she hands you this little wooden bowl Aww. of um, rabbit stew. And then she goes and she has um, this little metal bowl and she has a little metal tin. And she sits down in the chair across from you oh. and says, um, well, well, I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. And then um, she starts eating her food and she starts and she drinks her little drink. She goes, oh, I'm sorry. Do you want anything to drink? Sure. Yes. I, I would love something to drink because, you know. Oh, what I, would you like? Um, Lemonade. Tea. Tea. A Sprite. <laughs> I don't think they had Sprite. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> um, but what, what was that in, in Harry Potter? Butterbeer? Butterbeer. <laughs> do you have, oh, but do you have butterbeer? Oh, you are a halfling. Would you like some butterbeer? Okay. You know what? A little water, a little butterbeer would be great. My dad okay. loves butterbeer. Oh, your dad. Where is he? Where's your dad? Oh, he's back in Tranquility Bay. Oh, Tranquility Bay. I hear that place is very tranquil. It is, indeed. <laughs> But um, usually halflings don't leave Tranquility Bay. Mm. Well, well, what about you? Well, I, I, I had some, some heartache and some. I just thought it was a good time for me to just take a take a little um, stroll about. I just wanted to, you know, maybe go to the next town and and take some time for myself. And um, after all, I am a big girl now, you know. Oh well. I, Pardon me, you know, everybody looks young to me. <laughs> yes. And especially half the, I don't, you're always very, you will look like a child, so I don't know. Well, I, I'm a big girl now. And so I'm just going to, um, you know, go on a little journey. And on my journey, I met you. And this stew, by the way, is very delicious. Thank you. So you have eaten stew. Well, um, I didn't say that. I just said that this is very good. She, oh, okay. She told me it was stew, and I told her, and by the way, this stew is very good. Cause, okay. No, as a matter of fact, I don't think I've ever had anything like this. But do you eat the stew? Do I eat it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You do? I guess. Okay, so when Because remember, I'm starving, and... So when you eat it, you realize, like, you just... <laughs> the rabbit's really gamey. Oh, okay. And it's not cooked well, like at all oh okay um Hmm. and the broth isn't really that great either and some of the the vegetables almost seem cold Mm -hmm. like i think i started to eat it because i was hungry okay so i start eating and i start eating it and then yes halfway through i think i realized wait this really isn't very good no it's cold and it's yucky so she comes back and um she hands you your water and your little butter beer Uh and then um she goes Oh, oh, honey, you don't look well. <laughs> Great. Um, and then when you kind of realize it, you start getting really, really dizzy. Oh. And you start feeling really sick. Oh, no. Um, and that's the last thing you remember. Oh, great. So then you wake up and you are in a very dark room. It's pouring down rain outside. And. The moonlight and the occasional lightning lights up your room just a little bit. But you cannot see, and the the old woman is nowhere to be found. No. Well, this is not good. What do you do? Am I still dizzy and don't feel good? Or have I slept that off? You still feel a little dizzy. You feel a little bit better. Okay. But she is nowhere to be found in the cottage? 
Did I get up and walk around? You need to make a perception check. Okay. Because, I mean, that was a little bit of, of information that I don't know. 18. And... Two. 18 and two is 20. Right. So you are in a bedroom. Okay. Um, you are on a very, very small cot. There is nothing in this room, but all you can see is a trap door to the left of you, because you're in the corner of the room, um, probably the far right corner of the room. Um, there's a trap door, and then there is a circular window above you. Hmm. And again, it is just raining outside. And well, because well, when you said, and that old lady's nowhere to be found, but... You're in a completely different room. Yeah, yeah, because oh, originally... You got, you got a 20? Yeah, I got a 20. You are still in the same house. Okay, I am still in the same house, but evidently she or somebody moved me into this room because yes. I was in the living room a minute ago on the sofa eating mm -hmm. and then I passed out. So now I'm in another room. And so when you said, and she's nowhere to be found, well, you mean she's not in that room? Yes. Okay. So, right. So when I wake up, I go, where am I and what happened? So I do look around a little bit. Um, and my only option, I, I'm guessing, is the trap door. Do you try to open it? Maybe. It's locked. Okay. So, what about the any... The lock is on the outside. You are locked in. Oh, I am locked in. What about the window? It is about seven feet up. And I'm only three feet tall. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, that stinks. <laughs> So I wonder if the um, bad guys came or if this old lady was not who she pretended to be. Huh? I do not know. Well, perhaps I came across, you know, a scurvy lady. Oh, dear. So, so you were in this locked room. Uh -huh. What would you like to do? Well, I'd like to get out. How do you get out? Well, I have no idea because you just said that the thing was locked. I guess I could. Did I? Do I have a little um, axe or any little tool or anything on me? Nothing is on you. If there was, she took it. It's not anymore. Oh, great. and your bag is not in the room. That's great. Wow. See, that doesn't pay to be nice to people. Um. Yeah. No. There's nothing. You have nothing right now. Not even your holy symbol. So you cannot use any magic. Wow. Well, that really stinks. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, leaving Tranquility Bay was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So, um, I, I, I just have to try to get out. Yes. And so I, I look around the room, and perhaps maybe I can find something. Since you, since you got a good check, um, I, I mean, would say you start looking around. I got a twenty in. There's really not too much in the room. Well, because um, you did say that there was a cot. Yes. All right. So why couldn't I take the cot, stand it on its end, and try to climb up the cot to, to reach the window? You can try that. Okay. Sure. Um, so I uh, make a strength check. All right. So that's a 16. Oh, okay. Plus two is 18. Yeah. So you prop it up, and it maybe gives you about... Um, well, if it's for a person, a twin size bed is about four feet, right? Yeah, and I got an eighteen. Um, so, oh, um, that's not. It's just whether or not you can lift this thing or not. Oh, okay. You do, and so you prop it up, and um, if you climb up to it, yeah, you're you're able to reach the window. Reach the window. Um, you're gonna have to jump up to get the window. Mm -hmm. So but that is either going to be a dexterity check mm -hmm. or a um, athlete. It's either dexterity, athletics, or acrobatics, and I'll let you choose. Because you're going to have to jump up to this window. Let's do athletic, since I have a plus two. Okay. Thirteen, fifteen. And so... Okay, so... um, I'm guessing there's like a little ledge. Because it's just... The, it's slightly curved up. Um, but a fifteen, I'm going to say you're able to do it. So you, um, you jump up. And you're basically hanging on this little um, opening of the window. And you can kind of push it open. It's going to be a little bit of a struggle 
to get it open. Because I was thinking maybe even I can come around, um, hold on with my fingers, but I came around and kicked it with my foot. That's going to be an acrobatics check if you want to do that. Okay, well, that's still a plus one. Okay, so try it. 11 plus 1 is 12. Uh, okay, this is what we'll do. I will say you are able to do it. So, um, or you you turn around. So you are hanging on the ledge. And you want to spin, like do like an acrobatics, like flip, like a gymnastics, like bar flip to break through the window. Well, or, or even open. or even kick it. You know, you, I'm I'm holding on to it, but I, I I swing in such a way that I can just kick it, almost do like a, a taekwondo sort of you know side you know kick. Um, what and, I'm gonna say, or something um, like that. So, you this is what we'll do. Okay, you push against the window and you realize it's kind of like stuck. So you pull yourself up, American Ninja Warrior style. Okay, and you since I mean the window is probably close to three feet sure. big you spider-man hold your way up and you start kicking the window mm-hmm. and as you do um you are able to break through it mm-hmm. and it shatters and all the glass kind of gets a little bit on you but rains down and ch- like shatters across the floor and as soon as that happens you hear some shuffling downstairs Okay, so I'm- oh, and the rain is pu- the rain is now pouring in on you. Okay, but evidently, am I in the upstairs room? Am I am I downstairs in a room or am I upstairs in a room? Well, if you're if there's a window, you're upstairs. Okay, because I was thinking once the window broke, I just jumped out. So, um, because I've got to get out of this craziness. So when you so you're gonna get out. I want to get out. So when you get out, you are on top of the roof. Okay. Of this, of the, and it's a. A thatch roof, so you're. I'm going to need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Well, that's 15 plus 1, 16. Okay, so you are able to hold on, and um, as the rain is now just pouring through the top of this um, window, you hear a ladder being propped up, and you hear something coming up. The um, On the outside? No, you uh, in, inside the room. Oh. There's a ladder coming from downstairs, being propped up, and you hear some jingling against a lock. Whoever it is is trying to open... That locked room? Yeah. Okay, but uh, didn't, didn't I... I thought, I thought that when, when I broke through and, and I did this, this check and all that, I was on the, on the outside, on the thatched roof. Yeah, you're on the roof, but you can still hear what's going on in the house below, because okay. you're right next to the window. Okay. So you're on the roof. What do you do now? Is it feasible for me to slide down... This this roof and just just jump and just um, carry on get just to just, just leave. So I'll say you kind of scuttle your way to the edge of the um of the of the thatched roof or it's not it's not a thatched roof it's a it's a shingle it shingles okay um it's a cottage but it shingled okay um because thatch would be like straw like straw um and then that would have really broken you know right. maybe so yeah um, shingled roof. If you jump down, it's a two-story drop. Oh. Because you're, you're on the roof. Okay. So you're either going to have to climb your way down. Um, yeah, maybe there's, there's a, a, there's a, there's a, a drain. Chimney, yeah. There's, a, there's a, a chimney to your left. Yeah. Okay. So um, let, let's see if I can't. But it's all stone. It's stone and... and the and, chimney is made of stone and the cottage is made of wood. Okay. But the However, roof is made of However, when I was little, one of the things that... Um, that Elliot and I loved to do was kind of like this rock climbing thing. We used to, you know, compete. Oh, I bet you I can climb this. And so um, I was small, but I was really strong. I mean, I could pe- practically hold myself up with my fingertips. Okay, that makes sense of why you're so strong. So strong. Okay, okay. so try to climb down the chimney. Okay. Which will be, this will be an athletics check. Yes. But you're going to have disadvantage because it is raining. Because it is raining, so it's a tiny bit slippery. Yes. But hey, that's okay, because, you know, we, we used to do this all the time. All right, so that's 15. You need to roll again for because. disadvantage. You take whatever roll is lower. Oh, okay. Because now it's raining. Oh, really? What is it? <laughs> Three. Oh, okay. So that's really bad, because, um, yeah, three plus two is five. Okay. Um, so uh, so that really stinks. You start 
doing well. I you mean, start. Um, you go over to the chimney. Yeah. And you start calling your way down. Um, by that this point, like all you really hear is thunder and rain, so you don't really hear anything else. And then while you're going down, I would say you make it maybe about halfway, and then um, the um, one of the stones comes loose. Uh oh. And you fall. Dang. And so you fall, maybe about a story, and you land directly on your back. On oh, my back? Yeah. Well, that stinks. Um, unless Ow. you want to make a dexterity saving throw. Yeah. See, okay. Yeah, because, um, wow, that, that's that's rough. Oh, yay. Come see. I really know. Oh, no, wait. Wait. I thought it was 18 because of the way it looked, but it's 16. Oh, well, that's still fine. Okay. 16 um, plus dexterity is 17. Um, okay, so I'm um, thinking not back. Back, back would be really bad. You've had a bad back. You know what? How bad I that do. is. We don't so, want a bad back. <laughs> as uh, the brick falls, her first day. <laughs> as you realize it's falling, um, you quickly catch yourself, and maybe you 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 dig your hands a little bit into the um into the stone. It cuts it up a little bit, but you were able to then hop off and land on your feet. It's not comfortable. Mm -mm. It ain't easy, but you did it. And so then when you do that and you look, you look around, you're at the side of the house. Um, there is a horse outside. Good. There, Out of the cottage? Yes. And there is um, someone at the door that you do not recognize. And they're knocking. But they haven't seen me yet? No. Can I get to the horse without them seeing me? Um, do a stealth check. Because, oh, yeah. I am commandeering this horse. Well, it's a 12. What did you say? Dexterity? Or what? Um, no, stealth. Well, oh, stealth. Okay, so that's 13. So as soon as you start making your way to the horse, um, you, you're sneaking your way. You're very small. Um, it's dark. Actually, Yeah, it's, it's dark and it's rainy. Probably could have given you advantage on that. I won't. Um, <laughs> I'll see you're a halfling, so there's a couple of things that could have made that roll a little bit better. Not not going to help it, though. Um, <laughs> but you do make your way to the horse, and when you make it, it's this midnight black horse. Uh, it's got a saddle. It's, there's a bag on it. And as soon as you kind of go for the reins, the guy, the figure mm -hmm. at the door goes. I got to think of a voice for this. Where are you going? Okay, um, clearly I'm, I'm in a hurry, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking to him. I wouldn't leave. Do not take my horse. When he turns around, um, you see this gargantuan humanoid. You can't really tell too much of what race. You can't really even see this person's face, but you can just see this huge, bushy like black beard it's hagrid <laughs> no um no. it's not big enough to be a giant okay all right so it's not so big i'm to be I'm, a I'm i'm approaching the horse he turned he tells me don't take the horse is that what you're saying That's so I, I just said yes so but i can't i hadn't gotten on the horse you were right next to the horse i i i i won't lie i'm terrified i've been i don't know if i was drugged i was locked in a room like rapunzel over here and I had to shimmy down, hurt myself. Now I can't get away. So all I do is run. I want to say, I want to say the only thing I can do is run um, into the woods. As can I, can I do that? Yeah. Okay. So as soon as you start running, you're running through the night. It's I'm rainy. And you're into going the woods. again. I'm going to need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Man, that's awful. <laughs> I keep having these horror. Okay. Uh, Three plus a four. I can't have a four. Okay, so you're running. You keep looking back. You're really, really scared. Mm -hmm. um, you trip over a log. Great. And you land face down in the mud. And as soon as you get up, you see this figure standing over you. Oh, my goodness. Where did he come from? I told you not to run. No, you told me not to take your horse. And I didn't take your horse. Fair point. Do you live in the cottage up there? No, I do not. In fact, I don't know who that crazy woman was, but she... What's her name? I have no idea. But she locked me in a room, and I was just trying to escape and get away from uh, the crazy old lady. It's an old human woman. Yes. What is her name? Let me think. Yeah, Joe... 
Something like Josephine. Josephine. Yes, that's what she told me. That's all. But I don't know her. And in fact, I saved her life. And then she locked me in a room. And now I want to go. Do you want your stuff back? Yes, she took my stuff. How'd you know? He just walks. He he just walks back. And if you, you turn around, you see you're, you're a little bit ways of, of the cottage. And you just see this figure walk in. And he kicks down the door. There's a huge scuffle. There's a fight. You hear a magic spell go off. What do you do? Well, at the moment, I'm just st- I just kind of stay there. I don't go I don't go towards the house, but okay. I just stay where I was because he said, "Do you want your stuff?" So for whatever reason, I wait. You know, because I thought, well, maybe he'll come back with my stuff. And anyway, I can't, I can't go anywhere. So you wait. So I wait. So as you wait, um. You hear a couple shouts. You hear a couple other stuff. Um, the the figure comes out again. Hood still over the face. You can't see anything but this beard. Um, but he's carrying your backpack. Oh, good. And he comes over and he hands it to you. And then doesn't say a word and just turns back and goes back into the cottage. Okay, so I take I take my, my bag and I said, oh, well, thank you. And I just... He doesn't look back. And so... Yeah, I said thank you, and I I just walk, you know, briskly, briskly away. I walk away, and he's walking, I guess, back into the cottage. Yep, you went back into the cottage. Okay. And you leave. Okay. That was a strange um, first day, day on my journey. Turn of events. Um, so I assume by this point you still go back to Bondsburg, mm-hmm. and your your adventure would continue on there, and then you would eventually go and meet Ander. Um, and- I wanted this story... To start of start, you always say that Emmy doesn't trust people. Yep. Maybe maybe this is where it started. 